Hello. Hi. Welcome to Drinking the Kool-Aid. I'm Megan. I'm Hannah. And today we are doing our last spooky story. Um, First, before I forget, shout out to Isaac Stangler. Uh, he did the awesome spooky intro and outro music for us. And um, also the regular intro and outro music that you're used to. And then um, also we celebrated my cat Monster Mash's Gotcha Day. So that was pretty fun. Um, He got lots of new toys. Yeah, he did. (laughs) Ones that my cat wants to steal. Yeah. Uh, Yep. Hannah's cat was all about it and has been rolling around. Yeah. Uh, but Rona, he steals the toys. It's true. And hides them in Hannah's room. It's true. So. And then every time I go around and clean, there is just a huge pile of cat toys that I have to bring back downstairs and spread out everywhere for him to bring back to me. Yeah. It's a fun game. <laughs> uh, and so uh, sticking with our spooky theme, we are going to have Hannah tell the story again today. It is spooky. Oh my goodness. (laughs) So you guys are going to have to bear with me because I had allergies and then Megan was all, that sounds like it's turning into a cold. Mm -hmm. And I was all, what? No, it's not. That can't happen. And then two days later, here we are. I have a cold. I (laughs) could hear it. I can hear a cold. (laughs) Apparently she can because... She called it before it was even symptomatic, so yeah, I don't know how she did that one, but so, now Hannah is a snuffleupagus. It's true. I uh, apologize in advance if you hear me sniffing at all, and if my voice sounds awful, it's my bad. But um, we today are going to be talking about the Dybbuk box, which is commonly known as one of the world's most haunted objects. And I'm going to start out by telling you what a Dybbuk is. A Dybbuk is a very restless, typically malay... Whoa. That's what it is. A typically malicious spirit. I got there eventually. Usually with unfinished business in which they can potentially possess the living to finish whatever they needed to do. So this story is going to start off in September of 2001. When Kevin Manis bought a wine box at an estate sale in Portland, Oregon, he was told it was a family heirloom handed down from her grandma. Her grandma's name was Havalea, who passed away at 103. Seriously, that is a good run. I'm just saying. Yeah. That's really a good run. She was born in Poland and got married and raised a family there, but unfortunately was taken to a concentration camp during World War II. Her entire family at this point was killed. Her kids, her parents, her brothers, her sister, and husband, every last one of them was killed at the camp. She managed to escape, though, with a few other prisoners and lived in Spain until the end of the war. This is where the box comes into play. It was one of the only three items she brought with her when she came to the United States. The other two items were a sewing box and a steamer trunk. That really has no significance. I just was very curious and was hoping somebody else was curious too. (laughs) So I just threw it in there. Um, So after hearing that this was, you know, a family heirloom, Manis attempts to give her the box back. The granddaughter of the previous owner immediately rejects, saying her family did not want this box. It only sat in her grandma's sewing room and was never allowed to be touched because, you guessed it, there's a Dybbuk living inside it which was inadvertently created when Havalea put all her grief and energy into the box, you know, accidentally giving it the energy it needed to uh, to start up a Dybbuk. So she was very insistent on um, not getting it back, and she kept telling Manis, you bought it, you made a damn deal, take it with you, <laughs> and actually goes on to cry and yell at him, insisting that he takes this box. So he's going to take it, and she goes on to say that her grandma had been asked to buried, be buried with the box, but this was against the Jewish Orthodox of the burial process, so it was unable to be carried out. 
When she asked her grandma once what was inside it, she spit through her fingers three times and said a dibic and a kesselim. Now, I tried looking up the damn definition for this. Couldn't find it. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, the only thing that kept coming up was dibic. So I'm assuming it has to do with a dibic. It's just like tied into it. Mm -hmm. So Manis asks if she wants or if, you know, the granddaughter wants to open the box with him. She declines because her grandma was very adamant on never, ever, ever opening this box. And regardless of that, she wanted to honor that request. So Manis owned um, a small furniture refinishing shop at this time. And he'd actually bought this box because he wanted to find something to work on and refurbish to give to his mom for a birthday gift. It's nice, you know. It seems good. Right. And it was, it was good intentions, I promise. Yeah. So... He brings the box home, and he opens it. Inside, he finds one 1928 wheat penny, one 1925 wheat penny, a golden wine cup, a lock of blonde hair, and a lock of black brown hair, both bound with string, a cast iron candle holder with four octopus-shaped legs that he described as super weird, a dried rosebud, and a small statue engraved with the Hebrew word shalom. All items from inside. He attempted to return to the family, but they didn't want any of it. They were like, peace out. <laughs> I don't think I would be overjoyed about getting an item that has like locks of people's hair inside. Yeah. I don't really think I would either. That, no, um, very random things too. Yes. That would already freak me out. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> so once he wrote, uh, bloop, all right, once he rode, once he relocated, it to his shop. It was put in the basement, not to be thought of, again, you know, because it's just a box. And um, not long after, an employee calls him in hysterics, explaining that someone was in the shop with her. She was hearing light bulbs breaking, someone swearing, and they had locked, they had, uh, the people that were in there had locked the iron security gates that led to the emergency exit, so she was unable to escape at this point. Uh-oh. I know. As um, Manus attempted to call her, or to tell her to call the police, his phone died. So he sped as fast as he possibly could back to his shop. And when he got there, he found locked gates and a very, very, very terrified employee sobbing on the floor. As he made his way to the basement, he was immediately hit with the smell of cat urine. But he does not have any cats, and it never had any cats in there at any time, which is just sad because cats are awesome. They're the best. <laughs> cats rule. <laughs> so he quickly notices the lights are not working and realizes why his employee was hearing the glass breaking. Every light bulb in the entire basement, tube lights, regular light bulbs, everything, all shattered and still in their sockets. They weren't, like, strewn everywhere. They were all in their sockets. Oh, no. <laughs> With no intruder in sight and only one single entrance to the basement. We're in the basement right now. Oh, my God. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, no, no. I did not think of that. Great. And we're by the door, too. So, if you know. all of our lights just start, like, exploding, I'm, I'm out. Done. Yeah. Done. 100%. <laughs> yeah. So, Manus concludes there's no way... Anyone could have been in there, you know, because there's only one entrance and exit. So as he goes to discuss what happened with his employee, she's gone. She literally peaced the fuck out. She <laughs> had been working with him for two years and she never came back. She never talked to him again about it. She refused to speak of the incident again and she peaced out. <laughs> I don't blame her. I don't either. That sucks. I, I honestly don't either. So at this point, he has not thought anything weird like about the box mm -hmm. because you know it's just a box why would you <laughs> so his intent is to still give it to his mom for her birthday after opening the box he decides he no longer wants to refurbish it entirely anymore but instead just do a touch-up with some lemon oil his mom was actually out of town for her real birthday so he gifts the box to her three days later on october 31st what <laughs> It's so perfect. <laughs> she said, quote, it was like I was looking at the box and it was looking back at me. 
Uh, no. What? I just looked the look on your face was so great. <laughs> okay, so she was already like immediately creeped out when she yeah. handed this box. As soon as as soon as she got the box. Mom is smart. So she's actually in the furniture store with him at this point. And he's giving it to her and she like he walks away to go answer her phone call and immediately she thinks like something is very strange about this. Okay. Getting weird feelings. Okay, so after she says that the door of the box opened and she feels a cold breeze coming from it and says, quote, I can't describe it, just pure evil, unquote. This is only minutes from when she received it. And, and you know, like I said, while well, Manus was on a phone call, he hears an employee screaming for him. He runs into the room and he finds his mom next to the box, unable to move or speak with tears rolling down her cheeks. She was in the middle of having a stroke. What? Yeah. <gasps> I know. It's okay. She does survive. Oh, my God. She survives it initially. It's all good. Okay. Initially. Well, she oh, does. Yeah, she passes away later. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, she survives, and she has partial paralysis and uh, loses a lot of her sight and temporarily could not say or form words. Which, you know, we can't do a lot of the time either. Ever. We're so <laughs> bad at it. But she was completely coherent and could understand what was being said to her as well as respond by pointing to the letters of the alphabet, like on a sheet of paper. When <laughs> your fucking face oh, right now. Oh <laughs> my gosh. Manus, this is the worst gift ever. Oh my gosh, this is so funny that you said that because wait till I get further. Oh my goodness, this okay. next sentence. All right. When Manis asks how she's feeling only a day after the stroke, she spells out the words, no gift. When he told her he did, in fact, like give her a gift because he did. <laughs> and maybe she forgot due to everything with the stroke and whatnot. She responds, hate gift. <laughs> So he laughs it off and tells her he was sorry she didn't like it, but as long as she got better, he'd give her anything she wanted. She has said her actual main goal at this point was to tell him to get rid of the box immediately, but she was not able to get through to him at this point yet. So, oh man, here we go. <laughs> so he doesn't have a use for the box, right? Because his mom is like... Get that fucking thing out of my face. <laughs> so what other to do is uh, then giving it to your sister. No, me <laughs> Oh, my gosh. She gives it back after just a week and claims that the doors on the box keep popping open, which makes zero sense as there's no spring mechanism on these doors. Finding nothing wrong with the box. Manic Manus gives it to his brother and his wife. You have got to be kidding me. Okay, first off, who the F re-gifts something <laughs> over and over and over until somebody ends up liking it? What is wrong with you? But that's weird that it doesn't click. Like, your mom is freaking out and says, like, no True. gift. And then your sister's like... Yo, something's weird with this. And you're like, okay, I'm going to give it to someone else that appreciates this. That's true. But most people aren't as creepy as we are. Oh, yeah. Of no, course, our minds that. automatically would yeah. go there. But like a normal person, they ain't just going to be like, hey, it's definitely the box. <laughs> Being normal is vastly overrated. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Okay, moving on. I haven't even watched <laughs> Halloween Town yet this year. Haven't you? <laughs> no, but I'm oh, going to. Halloween is cool. Mm. So now he's at his, you know, his brother and his brother's wife. They kept it an even shorter time, though, which was only three days. His brother said it smelled like jasmine, but his wife swore it had a really strong odor of cat urine. So then he gives it to his girlfriend. Oh, my God. He's like, <laughs> you know what? This bitch has been driving me nuts anyways. I'm going to give her the cat her. urine box. <laughs> oh, so he gives it to his girlfriend. And uh, after only two days, 
she calls him and asks him to sell it because she doesn't want it anymore. He's over giving it to family members at this point. So he sells it to a middle-aged couple who kept it only three days before leaving it at his front door of the shop with a note that said, this has bad darkness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, man. So, instead of doing the smart thing and getting rid of said box. Oh, my God, Manus. Is he alive? I need to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> instead of, you know, after everything, instead of pawning it on his family at this point because he's just over it, he takes the fucking box home. Oh, my God. I don't get it. I just don't. Okay? I, I don't understand. Well, if he didn't get it now, I think he's going to soon. <laughs> It's funny that you say that. Well, you're really predicting this episode. You stop it. I don't appreciate your shit right now. He immediately begins having horrible or having a horrible reoccurring nightmare, which he says goes like this. Quote, I find myself walking with a friend, usually someone I know well and trust. At some point in the dream, I find myself looking into the eyes of that person that I'm with. It is then that I realize there is something different. Something evil looking back at me. At that point in my dream, the person I am with changes into what only can be described as the most gruesome, demonic looking hag that I have ever seen. This hag proceeds then to beat the living tar out of me. <laughs> I have awakened numerous times. <laughs> Stop watching your face. <laughs> I have awakened numerous times to find bruises and marks on myself where I have been hit. By the old woman during the previous night. Oh no. Unquote. Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys, I shit you not. He clearly does not listen to podcasts because he still doesn't think it has anything to do with the box. Yeah. Um, okay. Manus is definitely not a murderino <laughs> and he does not know anything about true crime. No, he really, really does not. He oh. absolutely doesn't. I was so, like, I was honestly just starting to get frustrated because it's yeah. like, you're passing it to your damn family members. You have all these weird things happening and you're just like, meh, I'm going to take it home. No big deal. <laughs> I was like pissed after he tried to gift it to someone after his mom. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, dude. But then I thought, okay, like you said, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Right? He's not like us. But seriously. Do we have to do this like 12 times right? to figure it out? I know. And it just keeps going. And and seriously, I, I don't think I've ever given a gift and then re-gifted it and re-gifted it. Like if someone doesn't want it, I'm just like, well, just send it to Goodwill. <laughs> yeah, I've never done that. <laughs> I'm not going to be like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll take that back. No. What? I mean, I guess he owned a furniture store, so it makes sense, you know, because it was a little little wine box that was supposed to be like a piece of furniture, essentially. But I mean, still, just... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get it out of your family, man. Mm. All right. So he, at this point, you know, still has no idea that this box has anything to do with these weird happenings. So one night, he has his sister, brother, and his brother's wife all come spend the night. The next morning, as they're eating breakfast, his sister says she had a terrible nightmare that exact night and goes on to explain the exact recurring nightmare to a T down to every last detail as the one that he's been having. Oh my gosh. As his brother and wife took in the story, they began to get weirded out because they themselves have had the exact same dream also. Now meaning all four of them have had the same dream with the same details. What? They're all just <laughs> getting like beat at night by a hag yeah, by an old hag <laughs> it's not getting their asses beat <laughs> okay it doesn't sound like a dream i want i'm no, good i'm I'll, gonna pass yeah i'll pass Thank on you. that <laughs> so at this point they're realizing they all had this dream before specifically when the box was in their house so each one when they each had the box you know as he was passing around his whole damn family yeah <laughs> So, Manus calls his girlfriend to ask if she could recall any weird dreams when she had it. All of a sudden, she's like, huh, I did, actually. And she explains the same dream. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know. Okay, like, why 
was nobody communicating. When I have a bad dream, I have to tell everybody. I, we know. We we know. <laughs> we hear all about them. It's true. But I'm just saying, like, I tell everybody that I know about my weird dreams. <laughs> and it's so strange that these people are like, oh, just wait keeping a it second. To yeah. yeah. They just now all of a sudden they're like, oh, we all have that dream. But again, we're not normal. Yeah. Yeah, we're really just not. Um, okay, so once things were discussed and out in the open, things got worse because now they're acknowledging it and they're giving it that energy that it needed to feed off of. Oh, no. (laughs) For a week after, he would see shadows in the corner of his eye, but he wasn't the only one. Any guests that came over during this time also saw shadows moving around, so he moved it to a box in a storage unit that was outside, but was awoken one night to the fire alarm going off. When he ran out to check what was happening, he was only greeted by the strong smell of cat urine and no smoke whatsoever. I don't, I don't get this part. I really don't. Okay. He decides to bring the box inside and attempt to do some research, in which by some miracle, he falls asleep. Tell me how all of this is happening and you bring the damn box back in your house and then you fall asleep. Okay, I wouldn't be going anywhere near right? the fucking box at this point. And he falls asleep next to it. Like, how is that even a possibility? you all those warm, fuzzy feels. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> oh. He is um again awakened and when... He- He wakes up, you know, he had that nightmare again, but he wakes up to the feeling of someone breathing down his neck. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, Oh, I don't like it. As he opens his eyes, he does it just in time to notice his smell or his house smells like jasmine flowers and that a huge shadow was running down the hall away from him. He, of course, does not want to destroy the box because he has no idea what he's dealing with. You know, if you set it on fire you're just going to release that stuff to attach to you if you you know if if you destroy it there's there's a possibility you're releasing whatever is attached to it and then it'll attach itself specifically to you or another object instead he puts it for sale on ebay oh you dick (laughs) you're gonna pass that shit on to somebody else but he's very very honest about it he literally includes everything i've told you in this story in the listing. Okay, then I'm sorry I called you a dick. <laughs> Divic box and all of the items that were originally inside included. <laughs> yeah, get rid of that hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, He had a lot of weird messages, of course, once he put the story out there. Because why wouldn't you? I mean, this is a pretty crazy story that you're putting on this box. Yeah. And uh, so he had to keep adding um like little additions to his like additional comments to his ebay post to like get people to stop asking the same damn questions and so i am going to just read you the um last bit of it the last couple comments he made on there because i just thought they were awesome so this is taken straight from the ebay post quote There is no way that I can respond to all of the emails I've received since I've put this thing online. I'll try now to update and answer the most common questions I've been receiving. Number one, no, I am not religious. (laughs) Number two, no, I do not wish to have or participate in any sort of exorcism or case study or photo sessions at my home. Three, no, I will not sell any of the individual pieces which were originally found separated from the other pieces and the cabinet someone's like i just want that hair i know why (laughs) why would you even or i just want that penny please give me that penny (laughs) (sighs) number four no i do not speak hebrew nor do i know what the word keslam means see he didn't know either (laughs) i don't know if that word is even a hebrew word number five at the end of the auction i have decided to take an opportunity to speak with the winning bidder for two reasons A, to make sure that the winning bidder is a serious adult who has employed some valid reasoning skills in making the decision to accept whatever this is. (laughs) I will not be judgmental. Do whatever you want or need after the sale. 
B, to offer full details of the events that have transpired. After I have carried out those responsibilities and upon payment, I will have the cabinet and its contents delivered by U.S. Mail, FedEx, or UPS to the winning bidder. At that point, I will have no further involvement with the matter in any way, shape, or form, period. Number six, to all of you who have offered to pray, I may not be religious, but I am certainly <laughs> open to the possibilities, no matter what your religion might be. Thank you. <laughs> Here is another update for everyone. Following this listing, listing, no, 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 I will not circumvent or make any deals outside of eBay even for more money than the final auction price. Weird. I know. If you want to win the auction and have that kind of money some of you are offering, there shouldn't be any reason you can't simply place your bid in an open, honest fashion. I'm sure you can understand why I might be suspicious. Also, for those of you wanting to know if I'm still experiencing anything out of the ordina ordinary, I thought everything was going okay until I got home on Friday the 13th of June, and found the fish in my freshwater aquarium. All ten were dead. Oh! I'm still hoping all of this is coincidental crap. Unquote. <laughs> yeah, I said it. You're right, it is fun to watch you make faces when you're telling the story. This is great. <laughs> um... We have a different setup right now, so usually we're standing right next to each other, and we're <laughs> uh, facing each other now, and it's apparently not good, because, <laughs> um, yeah, my face is just doing stuff right now. <laughs> I'm loving it. <laughs> now, I watched an episode on the Dybbuk Box um, on Deadly Possessions with Zach Baggins. If you're still with us this far... Definitely give that episode a watch because it's very, very intriguing. Should I watch it or would it freak me out too much? No, it's actually, it's a very um calm show. Like, they definitely have the creepy shit in there, mm. but it's not anything where it's like making you jump or anything. It's just, you know, you'll you'll be okay to watch it. You'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> like a dateline. I mean, sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> so, back to the story. Yeah. <laughs> The most previous owner of this box, Jason Haxton, who lives in Missouri, kept it buried in his yard in a military box for five freaking years, knowing where it's at, but never disturbing it. The first time he ever touched the box, he immediately was nauseous and threw up some sort of what he described as ectoplasmic looking stuff, felt like a knife was being ripped through his gut, and he actually woke up that night and is a Freaking eyes were bleeding. Oh <gasps> my gosh. <gasps> Listen, I'd bury the damn box too. What if he's a zombie? I mean, no. <laughs> Maybe, I guess. Well, it's like reminding me of uh, the Santa Clarita diet. Oh no. That is, <laughs> wow, you would go there. <laughs> no, I mean, if, if, a, if a box made my eyes bleed, I'd bury it in the yard too. But not in my yard. Someone's yard I don't like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like <laughs> the person that is my biggest enemy, Yeah, they're getting the box in Absolutely. their yard. Absolutely. <laughs> at one point, there was a guy living at this house, and Jason had put the box in the basement. They very soon after found the poor guy dead in the basement, sitting in a chair directly over the Dybbuk box. Oh. You can believe in coincidences if you want, but that's pretty weird. And then there's, like, cat pee all over the room. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so death has been associated with this box many, many times. Um, On Manus' mom's birthday, years later, Jason decides it's time to bring the box in and give it to Zach Baggins. So Zach actually brings Manus to his museum and lets him sit in the basement with the box, which... You know what? He was all in the eBay ad, uh, eBay ad like, mm -mm, I ain't ever want to have association with it ever again. And then here he is. Yeah. What are you doing? I know. He did it entirely by choice, though. Zach, like he, he said, this is your choice. And he was like, nope, I want to do it. So he goes in the basement with the Dybbuk box. <laughs> he immediately starts talking about how he's seeing things manifest in the room with him. He then faces the wall and starts chanting. And seriously, just going on a whole creepy rant in a very strange voice. You can actually hear his voice change 
from like when he's talking to Zach and then when he's in the basement. It just gets this like creepy rasp to it all of a sudden. And I I can't quote any of what he said, but it was so weird. It was just like the most random stuff, like the swings by the sunshine and like super weird things that just are creepy. So they're all freaking out. They're like, what the hell is happening? And so he finally comes out of this trance-like state and he goes back upstairs immediately is pointing out how he's physically sick and he like is like i was super apprehensive i don't know if i should have done that zach then asks if he heard the voices in the room with him he couldn't zach and everybody could hear the voices on the cameras while they were watching him but he himself could not hear the voices oh my gosh so they bring in a rabbi afterwards to help clear the air a bit and during him talking Manis ends up literally dripping in sweat and coughing uncontrollably and having a hard time breathing when he was completely fine minutes ago. 100% fine. And now he can't breathe. And one of the things that the box is known to do is to make it so you can't breathe. So Zach asks Manis if he thinks this box could kill people. He tells Zach he couldn't answer that question because he doesn't want to give it that power. Oh, it's so creepy. I end up, I know that gets me. It's so creepy. Oh. Oh, oh. At this point, Jason turns over the Dybbuk box to Zach Baggins because he's like, fuck this. I don't want this in my yard anymore. <laughs> and it actually currently resides at Zach Baggins Deadly Possessions Museum in Las Vegas, Nevada. You can visit it, but you have to be over 18. You have to sign a waiver just to see it where it sits inside a protective case never to be touched unless of course you're a celebrity like poor post malone who went to see the box and zach rested his hand on top he did not have the case on it he took the case off to show him he rested his hand on the box and posty touched zach for just a split second and with that second of contact he says that he has been cursed right after this happened the plane he was on the tires blew They landed safely, but it wasn't just one. It was both tires. They just completely blew. Only a few days later, armed robbers broke into Posty's old house, demanding to see him, but he wasn't there because it wasn't his house anymore. And not long after, he was T-boned in his car. Again, he came out okay, but he blames the box for his misfortunes. (laughs) Dude, like, what do you do to undo it? I know. I I don't know if there really is much you can do. Go back and apologize. (laughs) Oh, no. I mean, I don't care if I was famous or not. If a possessed item had a protective case on it, leave that shit on there. (laughs) Don't. Don't take it off and risk it. I I don't care. Just leave it on there, please. Yeah, I don't understand why people think it's so cool or funny to like go touch it it's and not. tempt it. Don't do it. No. No. Uh, stop. Just leave it alone. And uh, that is the story of the Dybbuk box. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That was scary. Happy nightmares tonight. Yeah. <laughs> there will be. I can tell. Yeah. I, like I said, I got I dove into the story real deep. I, a lot of what I read to you guys actually came straight from his eBay post itself. Um. Okay. Well, that was a cool story. Dude. Yeah. I was super, super into that one. Yeah. I thought it was just going to be a short little one and it was not. <laughs> the more I got into it, the more I was like, this is amazing. She kept texting me and she's like, this story really is getting long. <laughs> <laughs> I did too. Because at first I was, I told her that I would probably have to do two stories. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, I found a great resource and I am just on fire over here. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you guys liked it. Mm-hmm. Yes. And as always, uh, you should like us on Facebook, subscribe to our podcast. If you want to buy us any tequilas for our next podcast show, uh, you can head over to drinkingthekoolaid.com. We need Halloween tequilas. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but not pumpkin. I hope that doesn't mean pumpkin. Yeah. That no, 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 nasty. no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> uh yeah so (laughs) uh give us a five star review if you love us tell your friends tell your cats um bye. bye